This is the Laowa 7.5 millimeter ultra wide angle lens. Let's check it out on this episode of Micromatic. So I've been excited for this lens for quite a long time. It was announced like last September. Uh, and ever since then, I've, I've been waiting for it to come out. Finally got it about a month ago. And then just last week, I finally got my first chance to really put it to good use. So the Laowa 7.5 millimeter lens. Why am I so excited for this lens? Why should you be excited for this lens? Well, I don't know why you're excited for it. I'll tell you why I'm excited for it. So this is, as I mentioned, an ultra wide angle lens. And what that means is that it gives you just a really, really wide field of view. Um, so wide, in fact, that, you know, this is the kind of lens that's so wide when you're taking pictures, you gotta be careful that your fingers don't get in the way of the lens. You don't actually end up with uh, your fingers in the photograph because it's that wide angle, right? So on micro four thirds terms, you know, wide angle kind of starts around 17 millimeters, right? A 17 millimeter lens on a micro four thirds is about the start of a wide angle. Uh, if you get to a 14 millimeter lens, now you're starting to you know, get proper wide angle. Uh, a 12 millimeter lens, that feels pretty wide and anything shorter than a 12 millimeter focal length is gonna start getting into to ultra wide territory. So now this is seven and a half millimeter focal length, which means that's, you know, that's about as wide as it gets. And personally, I don't have anything nearly that wide in my camera lens collection, so uh, yeah, that's, that's one of the reasons why I was excited for this lens. Now, there are other lenses for micro four thirds that are of uh, similar focal length, um, but those lenses just didn't appeal to me uh, the way that this one did. So, you know, for example, there is a Samyang 7.5 millimeter fisheye lens, great lens in its own right. I did actually own it for a while, but I just didn't end up using it that much because of the fisheye effect. This Laowa lens, not a fisheye. That's what I want. Um, there are also two zoom lenses, one from Panasonic and one from Olympus. Uh, there's seven to 14 millimeter zoom lenses. Both of those, as far as I understand, are, are perfectly fine lenses as well. I'm just not a big fan of zoom lenses. And well, they're kind of large, especially the Olympus. The Olympus lens is a seven to 14 millimeter F2.8 lens, which, you know, that sounds great. Probably really super useful. It's just quite big. Uh, and it's also really expensive. So that's why, you know, those lenses never quite appealed to me, even though I really wanted something that wide. Um, so when this lens was announced, and it was announced as a seven and a half millimeter prime lens, not a fisheye, it's called a rectilinear lens, it appealed to me. So there are a couple of other attributes to this lens that I find pretty exciting. One is well, it's an all manual lens, okay? It doesn't have autofocus. It's got like a manual clicking aperture ring. It's a bit old school in that style, but personally, that's actually what I prefer. If you've been following this channel, you probably know that I prefer manual lenses to, you know, typical digital autofocus lenses. So for me, that's a bonus. Uh, other thing I like about it is it's really small. It's like, it's, it's minuscule. It's as small as most of the smallest micro four thirds lenses, which is great. Uh, and then the other thing is that it's an F 2.0 lens. So those other lenses I mentioned, the Panasonic is an F4 lens, which is, you know, that's fine. I stop most of my lenses down to F4 when I shoot them anyway. Um, the Olympus is an F2.8 lens, which again, yeah, that's, 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 plenty of, uh, that's plenty of aperture speed for me, but F2 just kind of makes this a little bit extra special and it makes it a little bit more applicable to, you know, astrophotography, low light photography. Um, now, if you're thinking F2 means you're gonna get lots of bokeh, uh, lots of out of focus blur. It's not quite the lens for you. So it is F2. It is fast. It's got a wide aperture relative to the focal length. Uh, just know that, you know, even at F2 on a really wide angle lens like this, you're not going to get really shallow depth of field unless you're focusing super, super close to your subject. So not really a bokeh machine if that's what you're after. So like I mentioned, I got my first opportunity to actually go out and shoot with this lens last week. Um, and I just kind of wanted to share some of my first impressions of it. So when I first got the lens, first impressions, obviously it's tiny. I, I know I've mentioned that before, it's tiny, but when you get it in person, it's really just strikingly small. In fact, it's so small that the lens barrel is a little bit smaller than the mount of Micro Four Thirds, which is smaller than any other lens I have. 
uh, at least in terms of diameter. Um, so it's got that going for it. The build quality is also really quite nice. It's all metal. I cannot find any plastic on this lens aside from the caps. Um, and I, I, I appreciate that. I like having all metal lens build. I like having metal to touch. Um, it makes the lens feel nice and kind of hefty. It's not super heavy. Uh, it's still under 200 grams, which is pretty lightweight for a lens, um, but it feels hefty. It feels solid. It feels very well built. Um, you know, everything on it operates quite nice. The, the, the focus ring is pretty smooth. It's not quite as buttery smooth as some of my other manual focus lenses, uh, but, but it is very, it's very easy to focus. It operates very smoothly. Uh, and then the, the aperture ring, um, I appreciate this, actually has full click stops. Um, some aperture rings on manual lenses like this, it's kind of like the, the new trend is to make them clickless. Uh, because apparently video shooters like it if the aperture ring is clickless. Um, as a photographer, I like having the clicks. It makes it a lot easier to operate the lens without looking at the lens. Um, so for me, that's important. I like that that aperture ring is nice and clicky. Now I do have three fairly minor complaints about the build of this lens. And now the first, okay, I'm, I'm nitpicking here, but the lens cap sucks. Uh, you might wonder, you know, how do you make a bad lens cap? Well, they found a pretty bad lens cap here. Uh, basically the problem is that it's just really hard to pinch the lens cap uh, and get it off of the camera. I actually went out and bought a third party lens cap to replace it just so that I wouldn't have to deal with it when I'm using this lens. Uh, yeah, the lens cap just kind of a pain in the butt. If you pick up this lens, I would factor in the extra like $2.54 that it's going to take to get a new lens cap. Uh, another quibble with the build, this one's a little bit more significant, is the lens hood. So uh, it's a nice small lens hood, you know, pedal style lens hood that uh, kind of screws onto the front of the lens. And it's, you know, it's so unobtrusive that it's the kind of lens hood I would just leave on the lens and I would never take it off. Uh, unfortunately, the lens hood doesn't really snap into the lens that well. Maybe it's because it's, you know, all metal build and there's not even any plastic bits for it to snap into uh, the 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 lens hood, it screws on and it, it'll stay there, but it doesn't fit super securely. Like it's it it fits loose enough that I was worried it's going to fall off as I'm taking the lens in and out of my camera bag. So what I ended up doing was I found this. Uh, it's like a reusable adhesive putty that I, I just kind of crammed in between the lens hood and the lens, twisted on the lens hood, and now it's fixed semi permanently. It's not going to damage the lens. Uh, like I said, it's it's like a reusable putty. It'll come off, um, but it does at least keep the lens hood fitted nice and secure. You know, you kind of wish that you didn't have to to make that kind of modification to to a lens that costs five hundred bucks. But uh, you know, I fixed it, so I guess I can't complain that much. Now, my third quibble is with the placement of the aperture ring, and this is not something I can fix. Um, a lot of these manual lenses, it's pretty common, honestly, is to put the, the aperture ring near the base of the lens, right? Some of my other lenses have the aperture ring near the front of the lens, and I actually much, much prefer to have the aperture ring near the front of the lens. Now, part of it's familiarity, because my other lenses are like that, I would like this one to be like that, but mostly it's that with the aperture ring here at the back of the lens, you don't have a lot of space to grip the lens when you're mounting and unmounting the lens, if that makes sense, right? So if I'm gripping the lens by the base here, which is the aperture ring, and I mount it onto the camera, I end up turning the aperture ring and then mounting the lens. And, you know, it's just it's just a level of fiddliness that I, I, I don't like. Um, it's not at all a problem unique to Laowa. A bunch of other manual lens manufacturers put the aperture ring in that same exact position. Uh, I just personally, I prefer it when it's at the front of the lens. I think they could have avoided that problem if they had taken up that construction. Uh, option, but you know, not a big deal. So what's it like to actually shoot with? So I mentioned I've taken it out on one photo trip recently. Um, and I was actually really, really quite impressed with the lens. So the small size, it fits great in the camera. Like it balances really well. Um, really super easy to focus. I, you know, it's a manual focus. If you've never dealt with manual focus lenses before, it might be a little intimidating, uh, but with modern digital cameras, it's really easy to nail manual focus and with, I, you know, with this lens, you can set it to F4, you can punch in your focus once 
and basically have everything in your uh, in your screen or in your field of view in your shot in focus at once because of the wide angle. Uh, one nice thing about focusing this lens is it has a really short minimum focus distance. So that just means that you can get the lens really quite close to your subject and still get the subject in focus. Um, that's really nice with a, with a lens like this because it allows you to do some pretty creative framing. Now, as far as image quality goes, uh, yeah, really impressed with this thing, you know? Even wide open at f2, the center of the image is really shockingly sharp. Um, the edges of it are a little bit soft and, and the, the edges start to get better as you stop it down to f2.8, f4, f5.6. By f5.6, you know, the image is pretty sharp across the frame. The extreme corners are still a little bit soft. Um, but with you know a really wide angle lens like that, that's kind of to be expected. And in fact, the performance of the lens exceeds my expectations. For what I was expecting from a lens from a company that frankly I've never heard of before, for what I expected from this lens, that it exceeds my expectations dramatically. You know, like I mentioned, even wide open at f2, the center of the image is totally sharp, totally usable. Uh, the one compromise that you get with the image quality uh, is that there's pretty heavy vignetting when the lens is wide open. And vignetting just means that the corners, the edges of the image are a little bit darker than the center. In fact, okay, it's not a little bit darker. It's pretty significantly darker uh, when you're open at f2. Once you stop it down to like f4, the vignetting pretty much goes away. Uh, f5, 6, I don't think I notice any vignetting. Um, so you know, that's something to consider. Uh, for me, you know, when it, when it comes to all the different things that lenses can do right and wrong, vignetting is one of the things that's pretty low on my priority list personally. Uh, but if vignetting is a thing that bothers you, just take that into consideration. So that is my initial impression of the Laowa 7.5 millimeter ultra wide angle lens for micro four thirds. Uh, I was really excited for this lens when it was announced. I was really excited for it when I had it pre-ordered. Now that I have it and that I've used it, I'm still really excited for it. So that's a good, that's a good sign. Um, I do need to, you know, learn how to use wide angle. I think that's the thing that's maybe uh, underappreciated is how difficult it is to make interesting compositions with a lens this wide. It's not really for everybody to be perfectly frank, um, but I'm very interested to challenge myself with this sort of lens and create compositions that work. Um, you know, I really do think that also this is the kind of lens that I think makes the Micro Four Thirds system even more appealing than it was already before because, okay, yes, on other systems you can get ultra wide angle like this. Um, Laowa even makes a 15 millimeter f2 lens, which is basically the full frame equivalent of this lens uh, for other systems. And, and sure, you've got access to that, but you don't have it this small. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. You can subscribe to the channel, and then I'll see you on the next episode of Micromatic.